Let's look at an example problem. Here I have compound A and compound B that look very similar, right? It looks very, very similar, except for you notice this has oxygen and this one has nitrogen. And this one is larger by this one particular set right here. So this one is larger. So the first question is this, which substance has the greater intermolecular force? Well, before we talk about which one has greater intermolecular force, let's look at the relative strength of each intermolecular force. When we look at the relative strength of intermolecular force, mostly we are looking at covalent compounds. And ionic or metallic or even network covalent are very unique because of their characteristic. Now let's look at the two compounds. Notice how they look very similar again. But if we look carefully, we have this part right here. This is considered a hydrogen bond. And over here, we also have a hydrogen bond. Because hydrogen bond is referring to a hydrogen or in a molecule with a hydrogen bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. When we have that specific type of bonding, we know right away it is a hydrogen bond. But in this case, both of them have hydrogen bonds. So you cannot look at hydrogen bond. So we look at something else. So the next one is the dipole and dipole forces. Well, if they have hydrogen bond and hydrogen bond, we know it has a dipole and dipole forces. Do we have any extra dipole and dipole forces anywhere? No, we don't, right? So we have to look at even at the weaker type of intermolecular force, which is London dispersion. And basically, what's so special about this one is that are the larger the molecules, will have greater London dispersion force. In this case, compound A is larger, so it would have greater London dispersion force. So what does that tell you in terms of number one? Which comp So what does that tell you about the question number one? Which substance has greater intermolecular force? And that would be A. Isn't that easy? And for number two, which substance is more polar? By looking at the intermolecular force, we can guess that the one with the greater intermolecular force, it would be more polar. Isn't that easy? Now, let's look at number three. Which substance has higher boiling point? Well, what is boiling point is going from liquid to gases, okay? So basically, we are looking for a substance with a greater attraction, which is A. The greater the attraction between the molecule, which means you require more energy to heat it up to break the forces between them. Substance with lower boiling point, it would have a very weak intermolecular force. And in this case, we have a substance which has a lower melting point. It's the same thing which substance has a lower boiling point. What is lower melting point? Melting means you have a solid and how much energy required to melt to solid into liquid. Well, in this case, it's going to be substance B because it's weaker in terms of intermolecular force. Now, let's look at an example. Well, which substance travel farther in a polar solvent? So, if this is a polar solvent, which substance will travel farther, A or B? Well, this is polar, which means the one with the greater intermolecular force will travel farther. So, let's make this assumption going to be A. Where B would be somewhere down here, okay? More likely, it's going to be somewhere up here because they're very alike. And of course, this one has a greater intermolecular force again. What if the solvent is now nonpolar? What would that do? Of course, it would reverse the data where the weaker intermolecular force, which is B, will now travel the farthest or farther. And then this is where A is going to be. Isn't that easy? Then, of course, let's look at which substance has high retention factor in a polar. Now, what is the word high retention factor? Retention factor is RF. So, the word higher mean it would travel the farthest. Well, in this case, it would be farther, right? So, which substance travel farther? In this case, in a polar solvent, that is A. So, A has a greater RF. And then, if we look at number 8, which substance has high retention factor in a nonpolar? Not a polar, but a nonpolar. So in this case, which one travel farthest in the nonpolar solvent? And the answer is B. 
So that's how you look at chromatography analysis and apply to understand the properties of different substances.